Eon was recently chosen as the lead supplier to deliver broadband wireless connectivity solutions to 30 remote communities throughout Latin America. The company recently won a Wemmy Award from the Wireless Communications Associations for its work in Ecuador. Kalai Kalachelvin is the CEO of Eon. Kalai, good to see you again. Thank you very much for coming in. Good to see in. you again, Jan. And we also have Ernie Isaacs, who's the Vice President Latin America Operations for Eon as well. Ernie, nice to meet you. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. I guess, first of all, before we actually talk about this product, we have to take it back to the Institute for Connectivity for the Americas, because it's the one who's overseeing this project. Explain to me what this organization is all about and where E.ON fits in the picture. Uh, Institute of Connectivity Americas is a Canadian uh, agency which is responsible or with a mandate to deploy uh, wireless networks or provide connectivity in Latin American region. And uh, basically, they wanted to, as a pilot project, start off with the 30 remote communities across Latin America and various countries. So there was a bidding process was put in there, and E.ON uh, participated in the bid, and then we won the bid in, uh, based on our merits of uh, providing rugged and robust wireless networks targeted for rural and remote communities. Okay, so when we talk about what E.ON is actually sending to these communities, give me a brief description of what it is. So what it gives you is what we call it as a Wi-Fi network in a box. So an entire network for a remote community is put in one single box and we ship it. Okay. And then once they receive there, they open the box and then basically the local people or the local partners will be able to install these things, like put together a network which connects to the satellite and then provides the distribution for a radius of 25 kilometers. So a connectivity is given, voice, video, and data connectivity is given to a totally remote location. And from the time they rip open the box yeah. to get the first internet connection, our target is basically four hours. They should be able to get the internet connectivity. And that's the power of it. And on wow. top of it, these boxes, what we provide is ultra rugged ultra-robust boxes. That means it can handle extreme environmental condition, extreme operating condition. I mean, that's the key for these things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can have Wi-Fi networks in Chase Manhattan Bank or in downtown Ottawa, right. where you have a lot of access to people if it fails. There, you need to make sure it keeps working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what we bring to the table. And okay. That's what we offer them. OK, so is it one box per community? Yeah, basically one box per community, which you send them. And that box contains all the things required for them okay. to make the connectivity happen. Okay, I want to bring Ernie in here because, Ernie, you've actually been to some of these remote locations. Describe to me what the environment is like. In the case of El Chaco, which was the inauguration, which I was at about 10 days ago uh, with the Canadian ambassador and with the minister of the Ecuadorian government, it's steamy, it's hot, it's wet. It's raining all the time. It's very, very remote. Uh, the people are mostly indigenous. Uh, they have no connection to the outside world. And I do have to tell you that when they sit down at that telecenter and they look at that screen and they connect to the internet, they, it's like Christmas morning with kids with a candy box. I know, guess. It, it is just a most unusual thing that you ever saw. They're just, they're just alive because they've they see the rest of the world as it lives. For the first time, probably. Yes, exactly. They don't have television. They don't have anything. Okay. So within three to four hours, when this box arrives and they unpack it and hook it up, their whole world changes, correct? Precisely. Okay. What's it connecting within that community? In a 25-mile radius or 20 kilometer, 25 kilometer radius from the center. In the case of El Chaco, it was set up in the municipal offices. There's a telecenter there. And then it goes to the local school. There's another one goes to the local hospital. Now, these people suddenly have connectivity through the Wi-Fi system back up to the satellite. Uh, the nurses can talk to doctors in Quito or even farther in, in the U.S. or Canada if they wish. The, uh, and remember, it's both voice and video. The municipal mayor can suddenly connect to the government in Quito, Ecuador, the capital, and see what's happening. None of this has been happening before. If you cross the Andes to get to here, uh, as I did, you, you drive from Quito about three and a half hours and you completely cross the Andes, which are higher than the Rockies, mm -hmm. and you end up in the Amazon jungle and it's just completely remote. So we're talking jungle here. You, oh, yeah. This oh, is in dense, the jungle. Dense jungle, yes. 
Wow. Hot. Hot. So I guess I'm for Kali, for for what you've done with Eon, I guess the real challenge is the humidity. Is that what right. it is? It is it is it is just the uh, humidity, the temperature yeah. is the key for these kind of places. And what we do is when we are shipping out the product, we make sure we shake and bake it. Yeah. And make sure it does meet those extreme environmental conditions and it can keep working. And on top of it, we have technologies where we do a remote upgrade, mm -hmm. remote management. I mean, as Ernie said, right, it's going to take three and a half hours for somebody from the city to go to that place. And if things fail, we yeah. need to have something which can give the life for that network. Yeah. <laughs> and we have that kind of a lifeline in the box so that we can just go through that one and then upgrade it. So our technology is really focusing not only on the physical robustness and ruggedness, mm -hmm. we need to make sure the network is robust through providing remote management. So, so far you've managed to do El Chaco, that was the, mm -hmm. the first one. You've also done six other communities, 30 yes. in total? There will be 30 in total when they're all in, yes. And are the, is the environment basically the same for every community, jungle, steamy, hot? That's correct. They're, they're all remote community. That's the whole idea behind ICA, is to promote connectivity into the jungles, into the remote locations of Latin America to allow these ind indigenous people into the 21st century. It'll be interesting to go back in a year's time to see it what will. it's like. Very it's much really so. Really. Yeah. Very, very much so. Kalai, I want to talk to you a little bit about this Wemmy Award that you've won um, from the Wireless, Wireless Communications Association. You've won it for this particular work in Ecuador. I understand that this is the first year your company's actually even been a member of this association. What's it like to win a Wemmy? Oh, that is, that is uh, a very prestigious award, and we are very proud of ourselves on that one. Because, uh, as you said, um, when we first came to know about this association and we started working on the, becoming a member of the association, and then when the nomination process was going on of uh, providing advanced technology for underserved, so when our nomination went there and we didn't even think that we were going to win that because there are big players involved in the association. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the membership of the association, you talk about more rollers of the world, Intels of the world. They're all there and, you know, they do uh, big presentations and big booths there. So we thought, you know, we just it's going to be nominated as one, any other nomination. When we won it, and then when, when I went there and then entered the center stage and then re received the award, and everybody was looking at the who is this Eon suddenly coming in there yeah. and then receiving this award. And then when especially when they are uh, describing the award about the technology, what we have deployed, we got very, very good response when I left the stage. And it was, it was very, very uh, happy to see that Eon won that award. I imagine you'll be getting some phone calls from other companies as yeah, well interested the, in doing business with you. We are already, right? We are already, uh, there quite a few people have asked us about uh, how to do it. And then, for example, uh, as soon as I went, won the award and came out, uh, there was a task force which are doing it for the tsunami relief mm. in, uh, for uh, India and Sri Lanka and Indonesia. They came and talked to us and then said that can we send this Wi-Fi in a box as a first responder, not even for the people there, just for the aid agencies yeah. to make use of it. Yeah. And then you can just drop this one and then within four hours we can establish the connectivity so that the aid agencies can start using this one at the first connectivity uh, point. So, I mean, these this are something, you know, uh, the interest which is coming in there. And on top of it, there are other areas in U.S. There are quite a few uh, uh, remote communities still are not connected in the broadband, which I was surprised to hear that, but mm -hmm. that is a fact. So, no, they, they wanted to see whether, how we can uh, help them. Great. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but gentlemen, thank you very much for coming in to talk about this really cool project. I'd like to see some pictures, Ernie, but um, not right now. <laughs> Thanks very much. Ernie Isaacs is the uh, Vice President of uh, Latin America Operations for E.ON, and Kalai Kalajalvin is the CEO of E.ON. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you. We'll be right back.